How did Henry Box Brown escape from slavery? Simple. In 1849, he had himself boxed up and forwarded to Philadelphia direct by express. The box was made to fit him most comfortably. It was two feet eight inches deep, two feet wide, and three feet long. With him were one bladder of water and a few small biscuits with but one hole for breathing. After he entered his box, it was safely nailed up and hooped with five hickory hoops and was addressed by a friend of William Johnson in Philadelphia marked, this side up with care. This box was transported mostly right side up, but for many miles it was transported upside down, which had him on his head for miles. This box went from steamboat to wagon to railroad and the delivery time was a little more than a day. Would the human cargo be shipped alive? The package did not arrive quite on time, but it was decided that the anti-slavery office would go down to the depot to pick it up when it arrived. Would this be a resurrection event like Lazarus when this ex-slave stepped out of the box? The box had been brought safely inside the office. All was quiet. The door had been safely locked. The proceedings commenced. Mr. McKim rapped quietly on the lid of the box and called out, All right. Instantly the answer came from within, All right, sir. The witnesses will never forget what they saw. Saw and Ratchet quickly had the five hickory hoops cut and the lid pried off. And the marvelous resurrection of Brown ensued. How do you do, gentlemen? Henry Box Brown was about as wet as if he'd come out of the Delaware. He remarked that he had selected for his arrival him if he lived, the psalm beginning with these words. I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard my prayer. Most touchingly did he sing this psalm. And then he was christened Henry Box Brown. With this success, these abolitionists tried their hand at freeing two other slaves with the same method. But Frederick Douglass complained that Henry Box Brown should not have been so quick to publicize exactly how he had escaped from slavery, which closed this avenue of escape. Indeed, when these two boxes containing these young men were, by telegraph, betrayed and the heroic young fugitives were captured in their boxes and dragged back to hopeless bondage, Samuel Brown, who had boxed these three slaves to deliver them to freedom was arrested, convicted, and served eight years in prison for this crime at the time. After all, he had deprived their slave masters of their valuable property, and before the Civil War, slaves were as valuable then as automobiles are today. Why did Henry Box Brown decide to escape slavery? Initially, his life was more tolerable than most slaves. His master leased his services to a tobacco factory, and he rented a house where he lived with his wife and three children. But though his master promised he would not split up his family, his master sold his pregnant wife, further splitting up his family by selling his three children to yet a different master. Henry Box Brown became a notable abolitionist speaker in the North, but after the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1850, he emigrated to England, just as Frederick Douglass did, not returning until 1875, condemning slavery and supporting himself as a magician and entertainer. And now we'll discuss the source we used for this video. We will be reviewing many of the stories about slaves escaping to freedom in the Underground Railroad and their other slave narratives. Frederick Douglass escaped from slavery when the abolitionist movement began. Augustine Tolton and his mother escaped from slavery during the Civil War. He was the first black priest ordained after the Civil War. And Booker T. Washington was emancipated as a young teenager at the end of the Civil War. In our first video in the series, Harriet Jacobs sailed for freedom after hiding for many years on her plantation. We read of Eliza Harris who escaped with her infant daughter crawling from one block of ice to another, crossing a river not quite frozen over in the winter, with slave catchers watching helplessly on the bank. This incident inspired a scene in Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, a novel that helped spark the Civil War. Harriet Tubman was perhaps the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad. She returned to Maryland 19 times to lead family members and other slaves to freedom, and even assisted in a military raid in South Carolina during the Civil War. And we reflect on the horrific story of Margaret Garner, who sacrificed her daughter's life rather than subject her to a lifetime of sexual abuse and slavery, who is the inspiration for the book Beloved. The YouTube description includes a link to our PowerPoint script that we uploaded to SlideShare and also our blog. Please support this channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed, which will earn us a very small affiliate commission. And please consider becoming a patron of our channel. Plus, we will host special discussion groups for our patrons. Plus, you can click on the meetup or small M icon to participate in our online discussions 
where we practice our future YouTube scripts. And please click on the links for other videos that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul.